Russia's war in Ukraine is now in its eighth month. U.S. and allied officials say Russia's referendums in Kremlin-controlled parts of Ukraine are, quote, a sham. President Vladimir Putin pushed for the votes in four Ukrainian regions with plans to make them part of Russia. But the balloting, fixed or not, comes as Kremlin forces are on the run from Ukrainian counter assaults. We want to get a live check on the state of the war from our Washington Post London based reporter, uh, Ellen Francis. Ellen, thanks for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Uh, we know just reading in one of your articles over the weekend, hundreds uh, of protests, hundreds were, uh, were arrested, almost 800 actually. It, it's clear that there are a lot of folks living in Russia that aren't so happy about this partial mobilization and, and not, uh, not all aligned with what uh, Vladimir Putin is wanting to do. Yeah, that's right. So we've had we've seen hundreds of protesters who have been arrested since Russian President Vladimir Putin announced this partial mobilization. And there have been many signs of anger mounting at this order, um, including a man who shot and wounded an official who was overseeing the enlistment in one region of Russia. So um, there are definitely this is definitely shaping up to be a not a very popular move. Are, are we expected to see more Russians trying to leave the country because of this mobilization order? There has been definitely an apparent rush to leave the country, especially by men of military age. Um, they don't have many options by now. Since the war started, the EU banned Russian flights from its airspace and the Baltic states closed access. So we did see traffic jams at the border with Finland, for example. and. Um, we are expecting expecting to see more people trying to flee if they don't want to be sent to fight. What what happens, um, Ellen, if if they do if they get caught trying to trying to flee, both leave the country and if they're trying to leave the military right now? I mean that that's happening as well. Soldiers trying to trying to leave even even in Ukraine and and, and get on the run. What happens to them if they're caught? There are severe repercussions, including jail terms. And um, just in recent weeks, Russia actually tightened the punishments. Um, for um, soldiers who desert or surrender or um, try to flee deployments, basically. And so they increased um, the jail term for that. And it's, a, it's definitely a serious, it's definitely seen as a serious offense to do that. There are annexation referendums underway right now. The voting ends tomorrow. Uh, how do you expect that, that to end? It seems like uh, there's the ceremonial voting, but Russia knows what it wants at the end of this. There is little doubt about the announced result, that it will be overwhelmingly in favor of these regions of Ukraine becoming part of Russia. And for uh, many Ukrainians, it's just um, a page out of the Crimea playbook. When Russia annexed Crimea, the peninsula, in 2014, the official result claimed that 90, nearly 97% of uh, voters wanted to join Russia, and that was after a disputed vote. So it's a lot of the same that we're seeing now. This vote supposedly is, hap I mean, supposedly a, a vote is happening in regions that are controlled by Russian forces, and Putin himself has supported the process. You have pro-Moscow authorities in these regions that are saying, you know, the outcome is assured. We want to join Russia, and you have residents there who in our reporting have said it feels like voting under the barrel of a gun. So there isn't that much doubt about what's going to be announced when this referendum is over. I mean, you've got the Ukrainian uh, people there who feel like this is a rigged, uh, a rigged voting that's going on, you know, that, that we said, you know, ends tomorrow. Uh, the Russian people, though, I, I know that there are propaganda newspapers that are being delivered um, around, you know, around the country. What, what are the people in Russia what do they think is going on or what are they being told is going on? It's certainly a different narrative and there has been a crackdown on uh, the access to information um, outside of the, 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 you know, the Kremlin line. But some people hope that or some Ukrainians and others hope that this mobilization order will be will sort of expose what's happening there on the ground and uh, ferment some form of opposition to the official line. 
There are concerns growing that Russia may try to escalate this conflict and potentially use nuclear weapons. Uh, it seems like that uh, back and forth and the, and the threat of that is at an all time high. What's the global reaction to that? We're seeing escalation on many fronts from this mobilization order and then the escalation in the nuclear rhetoric. And um, the White House has said that it has sent um, repeated private warnings to the top levels of the Kremlin to warn them of the consequences of using a nuclear weapon in Ukraine and has said that it would respond decisively, although it's unclear what this response could look like anyway. At the same time, the White House, has, the Biden administration officials have said they don't see any indication of Russia moving nuclear weapons for an imminent strike. Um, but still, this escalation in, in the rhetoric around nuclear weapons is unsettling. Um, you had, when Putin announced the mobilization order last week, he said that um, Russia would use all the weapons or all the means at its, its disposal to protect its, inter, its uh, territorial integrity. And this was definitely seen as a veiled nuclear threat. Ellen Francis, the London-based reporter with Washington, uh, the Washington Post, thank you for your time helping us understand uh, what's happening uh, in, in Russia and in the Ukraine area. We appreciate your time today. Thank you both.